Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And this is a five minute portrait, air show edition. So we're at my very first air show, and I haven't shot one before, thus being my first air show. And I reached out to a longtime friend, Matt Chow, who's done this for almost 20 years, to give me some tips, being that I didn't know where to start. So what exposure modes, what focus modes, what should I be looking for? And one of the things that he mentioned is trying to make sure that with the prop planes that you get prop blur, that you're not freezing the action of the, of the prop going around, that you're actually trying to get the blur, which isn't as easy as you think because if it's extremely bright out, we can do 8,000th of a second with this, but you may want to be at 1 60th of a second, 1 one twenty fifth of a second, 1 2 50th, to try to get some of that prop blur going. Now, I'm shooting in manual exposure because I want to make the decisions and not let the camera do it to get thrown off by something in the background or something along those lines. Now, that's for the exposure mode, but when it comes to focus mode, I'm in continuous focus. I'm actually using the 3D tracking, which I'm finding is going, I think is going to work pretty well for tracking these planes as they move. Um, so continuous is definitely important. If you don't have 3D tracking in your camera, they have the full autofocus, which is something that's going to work for a, a plane on a background of a sky like this, because it's going to track the moving subject. So make sure you're in continuous focus and you'll be good. But when you're shooting the jets flying by, that's where you do the opposite of the prop blur. You want to freeze the jets. So prop blur, you slow the shutter speed down, try to get your right exposure for that. But when the jets fly by, you want to go ahead and try to freeze them. It's kind of like when you shoot skateboarding and if somebody lands a trick or they fall trying to land the trick, they don't want you using that photo. Kind of the same thing here with prop blur. So we're going to go shoot through the show and give you some tips all throughout about what I'm finding works the best or doesn't work the best. And there you have it. Let's move on. So I just did a couple of practice passes as a micro jet. Micro jet? That was a micro jet? Yeah, it was a micro jet, meaning like really, really, like a flying car with a jet strap to it, basically, sort of, something like that. But what I'm finding with focus is I'm using the 3D tracking in here. I am still doing manual exposure because the light isn't changing that much. But what I found is that if I just try to autofocus on somewhere out there, it's going to be totally out of focus because it can't hit the clouds and then by the time it finds the plane, the plane's already going by. So what I've been doing is finding the plane manually, getting it pretty darn close, then activating the auto, the, uh, the 3D tracking and I'm finding that, that then it's tracking the plane as it goes all the way through. That is what I found that has worked, but that is one of the best tips that I've found so far, is, uh, especially with this longer lens, is try to do it manually first where you're overriding it, then hit the shutter button to hold it halfway down because then it activates and the 3D tracking is picking it up. So I did the first one at an 80th of a second. I definitely got prop blur, but I also got plane blur. Wow. So that's pretty interesting. Let's see how we did this time around. I'm focused on the prop blur. I'm at 80th of a second. I got to find the plane, let it rip, spraying and praying just a little bit, and then, and then panning with them. And I'm at, I'm at an 80th of a second at F22 at 100 ISO. And I think, I think I got it. And hopefully the plane is frozen. Let's see, is the plane frozen? It's close. Oh, I definitely have prop blur, but I don't know if the plane is sharp. So I was just trying to shoot the P51 Mustang, trying to do a slow shutter speed sometime at about an 80th of a second. And I was doing good finding the focus and getting it in the frame, but the propellers are, are nice and blurry but the rest of the plane isn't very good. So what I'm hearing from the rest of the guys here who have shot this before is you gotta try to find that happy balance, you gotta try to be still, you gotta try to pan with it better. So that's what I'm working on, trying to find the right shutter speed where I still get the prop blur, but also get the plane nice and sharp as I pan as it goes by. 
So one of the things to remember when you're shooting things at a distance, you may not need your entire lens to go through the whole focus area. If you want it to go faster, you can take it off the full focus, which means it's going to do all the way from the front, all the way to the back, meaning it, you know how it hunts and it changes? Well, you can limit to how it does that. So it could be either at the furthest point or the closest point. So if I was just going to try to focus on somebody close to me, I would simply do it in the closer area so it wouldn't focus beyond them. But in this case, we've got planes that are going to be further away. I wanted to focus on them and further and nothing else in between. And that way, I'm going to get my focus much better because I'm limiting just to the end part of the lens. Right, and here's a, here's a good quick, 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 quick tip. If they're not coming near you or they're doing something weird, don't shoot. Don't waste the film. I only have 36 shots left. Not really. It's, it's digital, but don't waste the film. So another thing to keep in mind when you have all these planes flying by, sometimes you may be spraying and praying just a little bit, but you want to be cognizant of how much space you have on your card. Yes, I'm shooting in raw and I do have some leeway with the exposure, but you don't want to overdo it so that your card and your buffer fill up way too fast and then you're just waiting and you're out of room. We have a little break right now in between the planes flying by and I thought it was a good time to talk about the people that are hanging out around here. Being that I haven't shot before uh, an air show like this, I'm asking questions of other photographers that have an idea of what I should be doing uh, and I'm asking them for little tips and tricks as we're going along. The whole things with the, uh, the prop blur and whether I should have my shutter speed here or my shutter speed there, just trying to pick up different techniques on what everybody else does so that I can formulate what works best for me. But it's really important that you do ask other people for, for some help if, you, if you've never done it before and hopefully they help you out. And it's all about passing the information along so hopefully you find some nice people like we have today and uh, we'll get back to shooting. So focal length is something you want to take into consideration when you're out here shooting a show like this. I'm using a 300-2.8 on the D4S and I'm not getting as much reach as I would like for the single planes going by. I would love to get them tighter. Oh, there's a plane going by right now. Oh, that's a jet. So for something like a jet, I don't have to worry too much about the um, about the props because there's no props, so I'm going to speed up my uh, shutter speed way up there so I freeze this thing in there when it's flying by. I didn't know there was an air show today. I came just to shoot seagulls and, and ended up with an air show. But I, I keep trying to track things. I'm seeing, I'm like looking at a distance. I'm like, here comes the plane, and no, no, it's a seagull. And I'm distracted and getting bad pictures of seagulls instead of airplanes. I'm using a 300-2.8, which is usually pretty long for most things, but that thing is really too far away, and I'm not going to crop after the fact because that's not what I'm doing. Ideally, at least a 600, and I don't even know if a 600 for what this guy's doing would be good enough. The 300's been good for a lot of different planes because they've been much closer. Um, it's, I think a 70 to 200 is probably a little too short. You may want to have... Wait, what, is there a plane coming? Is there a plane? There's a plane coming. Let me go shoot the plane. I'm having trouble finding the focus. There we go. There we go. He's a little tighter. And there, I lacked through a bunch of them. So I did a little bit of a spray and pray on that just because I finally locked and loaded. It was like playing, it was like playing uh, Top Gun on Nintendo. You know how you had to line up the red dot in the middle? Well, I finally got the red dot lined up in the middle and I was able to lock on it and engage my subject and let it rip. So this is one of the more difficult things that I've photographed. Uh, it, it's very hard to try to get one of these small planes with such a lens like this going on as that thing powers around. I'm not able to fill the frame with it. And of course, I don't always need to fill the frame. I could shoot wider and try to get some of the smoke trails that are going on. But for, for what I'm looking for right now is to try to get some of those tighter shots. I love filling the frame and that's really what I'm going for here. But this is all a learning experience. It's the first time I've come out to shoot a, uh, an air show, so I don't expect to be the best at it yet. But it's been great to pick up a lot of tips from the people around me just to get better at this. So hopefully the next time I do a better job. I keep thinking the seagulls are the planes and they're not the planes, they're just seagulls. Oh, there it is. Ooh, challenging, challenging, challenging.
Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's called motor driving. I had to do it, because you don't know when they're gonna cross. I think I got it right. It was like the Golden Cross or something. And you gotta, you gotta do that hip thrust at the same time. <laughs> Thank you guys for being spotters. We got good spotters out here today. That is definitely helpful when you're blind like me. I'm really blind, it's true. Fill the frame, fill the frame, fill the frame, fill the frame. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is more fun than prop jets going by. It's like more of a challenge, it's just high octane energy. It's, it's high octane and it's, and it's energy, that's right. Holy Jesus, that like blew my hair away. I couldn't even get a picture, it was too close. I think I heard that one. Wow. Yeah, that was, I couldn't even follow him. He was just, he was through my frame before I even shot. So the point I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure I got all four of them in there and I don't know if I did it, but I had to shoot at a certain point to make sure that I did get him in there. I think I may have done it. I think I, I think I did it. Yup, I did do it. Now it's just a matter if it's good or not. I think it looks good. That's cool. But I'm not shooting wider. I'm choosing to stay with the 3028 because I, I, I want to try to get the tighter shots and fill the frame as much as possible. And it really does help having these spotters here. They're like, left, right, seagull. To the right, to the right. So we got four at a distance, getting some of that tailwind, leading lines, putting them over on the left, rule of thirds. Yeah. Play around with some rule of thirds on that one, throwing them off to the left and letting the trails lead us in to the planes. Pretty interesting. Just something different. Holy afterburners. Man, the afterburners were blowing away right there. Jesus. All right, quick tip. I got a quick tip. Earplugs. Earplugs. I needed, I didn't bring them. I didn't know I would need them. Earplugs. That's not gonna do you any good. That's how you know where they're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow, that was my very first air show here in Atlantic City. Well, my very first air show altogether. There were some very challenging things and there were also some things that get easier as you go along. One of the best things that happened today was sitting and talking with the other photographers that were out here. They were able to show me some things that, that would work better or give me some tips as I've never shot this stuff before. But also the more you do it, the better off you're gonna get. And, and if you're going to an air show, I highly suggest that you check out which group is going to be flying, that you go on YouTube and you look up their videos to see what type of formations they do, because there were some sneak passes. There were some all different types of things that happen, and there's a lot of things to keep in mind, like the prop, uh, the, the prop blur, and then shooting faster to get the jets moving. So there's a ton of things to think about, but all in all, this was a heck of a lot of fun. I think it did a pretty good job for the first time out trying to shoot this type of thing. Of course, I can only get better from here, and that is what photography is all about and the wind is blowing and almost blew me over so we're going to sign out from here from the atlantic city air show jared poland fronosephoto.com see ya if you enjoyed this video and you want to check out some other five minute portraits just take a look here on the left go ahead and click that video to see another five minute portrait but if you're interested to see me editing these images or just talking about the experience more in a little bit of detail go ahead and click right down here as well and don't forget if you want to subscribe subscribe buttons right here go ahead and click it thank you guys and see ya now if we could have had up oh, four man i need to stop talking and shooting pictures Woo. 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 This is fun. I'm going by the duck and cover noise. Shoot, shoot and duck and cover. I just put my, I put my gum right here when I'm not, yeah, when I don't do it, when I'm doing a take, my gum goes right here. Everybody remember that. I'm like, what's this sticky thing on my hand? It was my gum. But I'll lean with it. Did you see that? You lean back. This is a, this is a aeronautical term. Lean back like this. It's all in the back leg. It's all in glutes and stuff. I don't know about these guys, but I'm here shooting seagulls. Holy sh! I cursed. Oh, well, I got distracted again by the seagull. I think it's another plane every time. It's killing me. Seagull.
Oh yeah, I got it. I got it, Steven. Look, I got the seagull. Yeah, bring out the iPhone. That's better than using your 600 shooting raw, I know. Why don't you start shooting seagulls? Is that a flying seagull? There we go, that's a flying seagull fortress. <laughs>